Hi there, welcome back. I decided today in my mask make I'm gonna do some altered envelopes and I started uh, prepping them and I wanted to film this because I only have this one that I can show this with. But um, I've watched a bunch of videos on altering envelopes. This one I wasn't gonna use because I, I liked the double window, but I want something with a giant window. Now, if you look inside the envelope, you'll see that the plastic that covers the window goes all the way. So this, I could take this part off, this off, and this off, which similarly I did with this one. It's still wet. So I just um, wet a brush. I'm going to show you uh, really quickly, but I was... Uh, pleasantly surprised with how it came out. So I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna collage this. So this was a giant envelope that I wanted to sew into my book as a signature, but I wanted it to be two envelopes. So I went ahead and did that and then, so I'll have one page and then this side I'll do the, you know, little round closure with the string on both of these pages, but they'll be sewn in the book. So they'll be like two separate envelopes, which I, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Somebody else probably has thought of it. I'm sure I'm not the only first original person to do it, but um, I thought it was clever. If you know of somebody else who does something like this or has a tutorial doing this, please let me know. I really messed up this piece when I opened it. So I'm just gonna put a piece of, you know, piece of scrapbooking paper across this to reinforce it. But the window had, like this, a return window and the other window in one. See, the return window was here. There was a space in the middle. You can maybe kind of see the line. I scratched too hard with my fingernail and kind of messed it up. But that's okay. I'm going to leave it. Um, and I thought, so I looked inside and I saw that the plastic was just as... The, the size of the whole thing and then this was just glued on so I took a brush some water wet the parts that I wanted to get rid of waited till it was saturated and then I just kind of rubbed it off but what happened was there was still a strip of glue down the middle and there was still some glue residue in the corners that I rubbed away and I could not get that glue off so go back to the scrapbooking days this stuff has saved my life so many times in scrapbooking when I would glue something down. It will not hurt the envelope. It doesn't even hurt photos. You can spray this directly on photos. It takes any goo, goo gloopy stuff off at all. Um, it's great. So I sprayed a little bit of this on the gloopy part, let it sit for a minute, and then I just gently rubbed with my finger. And now, let me show you. There's no more glue there. Bust out your old scrapbooking stuff. I know a lot of us were former scrapbookers or still do some scrapbooking. And we still have all the stuff that we had when we were scrapbooking. This Goo Gone stuff is amazing. I love it. So you see what I mean? This plastic goes all the way over the whole envelope. Now I want an envelope with a giant window. So I'm going to take all this extra white off. So, talking about the allergies because I'm apologizing for my sniffles, people, because it just cannot be helped this time of year. I try to edit as many of them out as I can, but... Okay, so you need to get the whole thing wet, because this whole thing is glued down. You see, it kind of saturates there. You might have to come back and keep reapplying. This part is going to be really glued down. This is where the seam of glue was before. And I got impatient and I rubbed it away really quickly. I'm going to let it I'm going to let it set for a little bit this time. Uh, I have I'm sure there are so many envelope tutorials out there. I'm sure someone else has done this too. It'll be easier to decorate this when I have it all flat. It'll be easier to put my paper on. Okay, so this is not glued down. This is where you can see where the glue is here, 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 
here. So these are not glued. So they're going to come away really quickly. Okay. So the paper comes right up, but the residual glue kind of stays there. Now, don't scrape it too much with your fingernail like I did the first time because you will put uh, scratches in the plastic that you don't want. And if you peel back too much, it's okay because you're going to cover it over with paper anyway to reinforce it because these are envelopes are kind of to stand up in a junk journal. You really have to reinforce them with some more paper on top. Then you got to be careful not to use scrapbook paper. You want to use thin paper because if you use all scrapbook paper on it, it can be very um, bulky. Don't have my words today. All right, so here goes the Goo Gone. This stuff has not been used in, oh my God, forever. So I'll just let it sit for a minute. I'm actually gonna make a template out of this somehow. I will figure it out. I don't want to sacrifice the window. All right, so now I just come back. Gugan will not hurt your fingers. You can use your finger. So it's taken off the paper, but you can still see the lines. I know because this is black. You can still oh, I'm put a piece of black scrapbook paper behind it. You can still see those little white lines. Now that is still residual glue. So you just have to go back and kind of work it. And if it's a little bit, you know, of a ghosted image, that's okay. Um, I tried rubbing it with a wipe too. That tended to work a little better. You can see it's kind of rubbing it off. Just be careful not to. See, just by rubbing, takes it right off. Oh my God, I can't believe. I was like, when I did this and I first when I did the first one, I was like, what do I have that will take that glue off? Because I don't want that glue there. I want it to be a clear, plain window. And then I was like, wait a minute. I just unpacked a bunch of my scrapbooking stuff that's been in storage for years. And I knew I brought it in. I knew I brought the goo gone in here. I was like, where did I put that stuff? And it was, then it was the mad hunt for it here in the... Mm, there's a crease in the plastic. It's a bummer find it in my studio so I could do it but I'm so glad I found it because look at that it's like a freaking miracle that stuff is works great I think it's the same kind of product that Citrusolve is and I don't know if you've ever done played with Citrusolve and done um, <sighs> printing where you put the Citrusolve on a magazine page and it dissolves the ink and then you can go and make patterns in the ink and make really cool papers all right so there we go. One giant window envelope. I'm stoked about this. So I'm gonna uh, cover this and then I'll glue this flap shut. I've been wanting for a long time to do an acetate, a clear acetate tag because you know, you put your background paper in here that's pretty, you know, and then you put a tag over it and you don't see it. And I would like to do some kind of a clear something in there right so that it's interactive with the with what's in there so I've got my my background I will have something on the acetate and then this will layer over it so it'll almost look kind of three-dimensional I don't know that's my plan I don't know if it's gonna work out or not but I'm gonna try it these glue sticks I mean you can get them this one I bought at a scrapbook store but I go to Walmart sorry for all you people that don't have Walmart in other countries. But I go to Walmart here after school starts. 
in September, October-ish, and even now, in the clearance section, they have tons and tons of these glue sticks, and you get them for dirt cheap. I think I was buying five packs for 25 cents, because they just want to get rid of them, because they have an overabundance from all the back-to-school supplies. So I know school teachers probably do the same thing and they're hip to it. So, but I'm just sharing the idea out there for other people. If you like this kind of glue, this is mushy and messy, but it gets the job done. So now it's kind of, it's kind of flimsy because we've taken away the structure of the envelope, but gonna get better here in a minute when I cover it. I know there's all kind of measurement thingies on here. Oh, there's inches on here. What? I never saw this. See, I don't pay attention to things. Sometimes I'm like, ding dong. All right, I'm gonna do it three quarters here. So three quarters is gonna be my border around. My little grandson has been he figured out the beauty of the paper cutters. <laughs> He's really into art. And boy, his stepmom said, Woo, he is all about the art. He is just wants to cut paper and do art all day. I said, I know. He spends a lot of time with me out in my art room doing art. <laughs> she goes, oh, that's why. <laughs> so he discovered the paper cutter the other day. That and the... <laughs> The punches, but he's not strong enough to make the punches work, so he gets frustrated. So I had to give him, you know, copy paper that I had printed, um, you know, some test prints and things on. I gave him that to, um, to use in the in the punches, and he was punching things out. And I go, when we left my room, I go, "Hey, you turkey, you left a big mess for you. I had to clean up." He goes. He goes, well, I'm done with my art. Now you have to clean it. I said, mm, I don't think I have to clean it. I think you have to clean it. He's like, well, yeah, yeah. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> it's like, it reminds me of his mother because when she was little, <laughs> her room was a mess. And I told her, you need to clean this. I just spent hours cleaning her room and organizing it. She went in there and it was hurricaned in like 10 minutes. And I was really upset. And I said, you this is not nice. Mommy just spent a lot of time cleaning up this room. She's laying on her bed with her hands behind her head and her <laughs> her knee bent with her ankle crossed over. And she's like, Mom, I'm just not a cleaner. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. The apple does not fall far from the tree. He's he like his mama. <laughs> but I did just tickle me. The funny things you see. History repeating itself with your kids. <laughs> it just... You know, you can't help but laugh. It's so funny. My last video, when I did the mask make of the snippets, which uh, now I remember, <laughs> again, me and my memory, that it's not called snippets. They are called clusters, okay? So for those that were cringing when I kept calling them snippets and they're really clusters, I'm sorry. What happens is, I don't know if anybody else has this issue. I'm sure other people do too. Um, when you get into the create mode, you have a hard time talking. Oh, I remember. Okay. My last video, you could hear music, kid music in the background. Cause he, <laughs> I've set up a little area for him in my studio. He used to have a bed, a queen size bed in the back. And now we're going to actually turn that into a bedroom for him. That We have to cut a hole in the cottage that my studio is attached to and, and turn it into a bedroom for him. So the bed's gone and it's just op open space back there. And I have a few bins that I'm storing some junk. But I said, let's make a Toby station. He says, okay. So we, he ran in his room and he got a rug and his favorite blanket. And um, comes running out. And uh, says, okay, I got all the stuff for the Toby station. I said, all right, you can put whatever you want there. He goes, I want my, I want this and my, we're trying to get him to get rid of some stuffies because he's got a lot of stuffed animals, but no, apparently he's keeping them till he dies. He says, I'm keeping them forever and I'm not giving any to my baby cousin. I was like, mm, okay. So I told his mom, I said, yeah, well, you don't want to share too good yet. He's got to learn. He's got only child syndrome. <laughs> so we made the little Toby station, but he sat over there with my computer while I was recording the other day. Um, 
watching his little shows. And then when I was watching the playback of my video, I could hear the little, <laughs> the little music in the background from his little TV show. So sometimes he's in here. Then now he's gone to dad's for the week, and he'll be back next week. But he. Uh, that little dude, it's so amazing. And I know, you know, I'm not one of those grandmas because I know everybody feels this way about their grandchild, but he brings so much laughter and sunshine and happiness into my life. And there was a time in my life where things were pretty dark and all I had to look forward to was being around him. So I'm really blessed and very thankful that you know, they live with me and I get to spend as much time with them as I do because we got a new baby coming to the family and I'm not going to have that, you know, same experience with her. Although I'll go over and visit her a lot. It's not the same as living there in the house. And my daughter-in-law was saying that she goes, you know, I was really lucky that my grandparents lived across the street and I was with them all the time. My grandma babysat me until I went to school. And then, you know, my grandpa picked me up from school every day. She goes, and I, I really want our baby to have that. But... I said, well, I will come over, and I'll bring Toby, and we can have, you know, family fun days with cousin and all that. I said, well, still, we'll work it out. It's not the same, no, but it'll still, uh, it'll still be good. You know, I feel for those people whose children, grandchildren live far away. Like, you know, I know a lady, her, her we were talking a couple weekends ago, and her family, her daughter, and son and on her grandchildren all live in Norway, Sweden. You know, she says it's really tough because they, you know, that they, the kids don't come here, you know, often. And her and her husband still work, you know, and then they got to save up money to go, you know, on a, you know, and it's not, it can be cheap to go to Europe if you have people to stay with that, you know, because your biggest expense is your flight and your your accommodations. So if you've got people to stay with, I mean, it's certainly a lot easier than when you got to rent a hotel, that's for sure. But um, still, you know, how hard it must be to only get to see your grandchildren on, on FaceTime and, and, you know, once in a while, you know, when they can come to town and visit. Of course, when my grandson gets bigger, he's going on trips with me. I'll take him to Europe. Um, you know, obviously I gotta make sure that it's cool with dad and as well as mom, but, um, we're going to have a good time. And he told me when I came back from Europe, he says, yeah, yeah, no more long trips. So why? He goes, no more. I said, but I said, but why? He goes, because I miss you too much. You can't go for a long time. Only for two sleeps. <laughs> said, well, I'm going to go on more trips, bud, but I won't go as long. I won't take another six-month trip, that's for sure. That was too long. I mean, I had a great time, but um, it was really hard. It, on him here in our house, he's with me all the time because my daughter works long hours. and So we just use my little sidekick. We do everything together, and he has discovered we have a place. I don't know if you have them where you are, but we have this place, Scandia, which is like a place where you can go do peewee golf and video games, and they have play structures, and and uh, he loves that place, and he always has an agenda. It's video games first. We're not going straight in the play structure, because once he goes in there, he has to stay in there for a long time, and he wants to do the video games first. So we give him a budget, <laughs> and we give him some money. We say, you put this on a card, and when the card is out of money, then you're all done with video games, and then we're going to go, you know, play some, uh, play in the play structure. So he's usually pretty good about it. I should have, I think I'm going to go ahead and glue that down, and I've got to make some, yeah. What we're gonna do. I'm gonna glue it down and I'm just gonna cover this whole sheet with a piece of this whole thing on the back with a piece of paper. But then how do I put it in a how are we gonna put it in? Hmm. Okay. I got it. I have serious radio in my car because with my wine tours, um, when I go up in the mountains here in the Napa Valley, I don't always get um 
reception. So I, I have serious radios because that, you know, satellite radio comes in everywhere. But I'm so tired of the cold and the freezing here that, <laughs> that I'm listening to Jimmy Buffett radio all the time, Margaritaville radio. And uh, it has inspired me to book a trip. So I'm going for two weeks to Mexico and a week to the Caribbean in April for my, well, I come home on my birthday, which is the 29th, um, because the baby shower for the new grandbaby is on the 30th. So I gotta be home for that. So I'll fly home on my birthday so I can be here for the shower. But um, yes, I am looking forward to it. And I've been listening to all Jimmy Buffett music because it puts you in the vacation frame of mind. And um, you know how you get a song stuck in your head and you just can't stop singing it? Well, I got the song Fruitcakes <laughs> stuck in my head. And I just want to bust out singing it while I'm here doing this. And probably not the best thing. You guys don't want to hear my singing. I've sang on here before. And I can sing. But the voice is a little uh, rusty. And I'm going to have to, when I'm done filming, turn it on. Because, you know, I found the best way to get it out of your head is to play it really loud. Sing along to it. Rock out. And then you're done. And then you're on to a new song. But I must have dreamed that song last night in my dream. Because I, I have soundtracks in my dream. And uh, I wake up every morning with another song in my head. And I know it's because I probably dreamed it. Because I've been listening to his music so much in the, when I drive around in the car. I really want to. One of my bucket list things is to see Jimmy Buffett live in concert. And I have never have. And I have a friend in Florida, and she's invited me a couple times, but it's never worked out for me to go. <clears throat> but I am going to one of his shows this year. I don't care where in the world it is. If, if he's in a place where I can go see him, I am going. Because I don't want to wait anymore. And, you know, some of these guys are getting older. Willie Nelson was another one. He was performing here in my area the day I came back from Europe. I was so bummed. If I had known, I'd have come back a day early for sure because I really wanted to see him because, you know, Willie's getting up there. And Willie and I are birthday twins. We have the same birthday. Um, a few years apart. He's a little older than me. But um, he's still out there touring and tearing it up. Everybody said that the, the people that I know that went, he was here in the air in the Sacramento area, and I think he was in like San Jose, and then he was down in Hollywood at the Hollywood Bowl, and my friends went to the Hollywood Bowl show, and they said, oh my God, he was amazing. And it was her one of her bucket list things to see, to see um, Willie in concert. So, okay, we have gone, I don't know, we're talking about everything here today. You know, you got to fill the time. I don't want to just sit here and, well, I can just babble that, you know, no problem. <laughs> I'm just blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I go down the rabbit hole, literally, like Alice, and I'm lost. And it's like, what was I doing? Where was I? What was my, my husband used to call me Dory. <laughs> like Dory from, from uh, Finding Dory. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, what were we going to do? <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. You're like, Dory. It's been happening for a while. <laughs> it's not just today. Then I have to pause the camera, and I'm going to have to hunt for some clear acetate. Big enough. I know I have some sheets of it to fit in this for a tag. So I finished collaging everything on. I took the flap of the envelope, folded it on itself, and made, I don't know what this thing is called. It's not a gusset. It's a, well, it's a thing that you stick to the side of your page that you want to tip this into, and then cover it with some more paper so that it lays like that over. Anyway, you guys get it. I don't know what it's called. The flappy thingy. That's what I'm calling it for now. All right. So I got a big piece of acetate. You're not going to be able to see it. I'm going to try. But so I save, you know, when I buy, when you buy Christmas cards and it comes with a little clear top, 
or any kind of thing that has a big clear top. Like Costco's great for having this kind of um, clear plastic on their stuff. I save those pieces. I trim them down and I put them in a big shoe box, like a boot box. And because I know that one day I had this idea to make an all acetate journal and do, you know, artwork on one side and artwork on the other side, but so that it kind of showed through and you could layer it like I'm going to do on this tag. Now, I don't know how it's going to work because I don't typically glue... I usually paint. I don't typically glue an image on the acetate, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of want to use her. And I, I put this, I want to put this at the bottom just to elongate the tag because the tag is, the acetate is short and I want the tag to fit in the window properly. Okay, moment of truth here. Oh, wow. I love it. Can you guys see that? That is so... Oh, gosh. I amaze myself sometimes with the things I come up with. And again, like I said, this is probably not a new idea. I'm sure other people have done this, but I'm really happy. I was going to snip this little... I don't know if you can see with the plastic and everything, but there's like a little quarter-inch overhang here. But if I do that... This is the only bad thing when you work with glue. You get it on your stuff. I may have to come back here with some after it dries. I may have to come back with some Goo Gone. Actually, Goo Gone, yesterday I was saying that this is from the scrapbook days. This actually wasn't the product that we used. The product that we used was called Undo, but it's basically the same stuff as Goo Gone. So if you use your liquid glue, be sparing because it definitely gets on your, on the acetate. Okay. Well, Karen was not thinking because I can't, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a dork. Uh, I can't use this to slide the tag in and out if this is attached to the page. Oh my God. So now I gotta come back and undo this side. And I'll put it in, cause it'll flip around this way in the tag. Oh gosh. It's gonna have to be top loading. See, this is what happens when I talk and craft and then I mess things up. I'm going to test this out first. I'm not going to glue the washi onto my card in case I decide I don't like it and I want to change it back. Which is the cool thing about washi is you can. Stick it down, unstick it, stick it down again which is the beauty of it. But I always glue it down once I'm sure I'm gonna place it. Because of the fact that it can be peeled back up, it definitely, I've lost some stuff that I've just stuck down with just the washi. work on this to get it bent because she kind of flips forward. I, don't want, I want to be careful not to I can hear the glue popping. I don't mind. I'm just trying to get her to, there. I want her to lay flat. Okay. So we got that. I'm not going to reinforce this until I'm sure I want to do it. But I'm going to get another piece of mylar make another tag and see how it looks later. I'm so stoked with how it turned out. I am going to go ahead and reinforce that because I like the way it looks. I did the other tag. You can see here. So it looks like this. Which is, you know, floating city and a mountain and a 
but layered with the background that's already in there. And layered with the lady. I love it. And you could, this could go on and on. I could put another one behind there with some other kinds of elements. But it's pretty busy right now, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. But I'm totally doing this again. This turned out way better than I thought it would. I did go ahead and make some other envelopes as well. I'll just give you a quick peek of those. This little tuck one stuck the little aisle there like I said I was going to. Put some gears here in the front tuck. And this little tag here. And then some other ones where I, um, the, it's glued down now so you can't see, but I basically cut the window out of the other envelope, made the envelope out of the cardstock, and then just glued the, uh, the window back in. That's a cheater way. And these two are done. I just have to sew the fabric on, make the flap, and embellish those. I'll show them to you when I have them in the journal finished. This one I liked. I had this piece of paper that had Big Ben on it. So we just went ahead and cut it as a tag just sticking there. And then some other random Tim Holtz scraps that I had. So sometimes I'll probably trace this off on a piece of cardstock because it's a nice envelope to have a template. This one was just um, copy dyed paper. The window didn't come out, didn't look straight, so I put the little frame around it. And I'll probably put some of my little embellishments on there that I made. A cool map one that I had made previously to be an envelope, but I think it's just going to be, I think it's going to be a little booklet. I'm going to sew some note paper in there and then have this be, that I can stick it in the book like this. And it can be a notepad, but it can also be a cool map. More, I did a big mass make with all this Tim Holtz cardstock that I had made a bunch of envelopes. Then I found them in my stash. I wish this was a raven because at the Tower of London, her ra the Queen's ravens are there, and that would be cool. I'll have to find a raven picture and put it in there. And this one, yes, I inked. Look at that, people. I've got this cute little bird. I don't know if I'm going to put him there or where I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but I did ink and it did make it stand out better. I was going to put another one that flips up, but I don't think I'm going to. Tracy Fox had a swap in her Facebook group, and this is one of the things that my swap partner sent me. She sent me a lot of cool stuff that I could use for my Italy and England journals. So this is one of them, and I just love that page. Now I'm going to put something... I have a picture of a friend sitting on the... <laughs> sitting on the tube next she was very nicely dressed and she's sitting next to this man that had a top hat on and somebody got a picture of her and i got to get a copy of that picture because i'd like to put it right there i think it says like you know you never know who you're gonna come across in the undergrowth and then i'm gonna do my little fasteners there have to find my brads so happy with that too all right this little bird in here so i don't forget him all right so that is it for my envelope making i know it was a long process all the other ones you guys don't really care about because you've seen everybody else do them i am stoked about this this is so cool so try this i know you're all going to be on the hunt for these in your junk mail now <laughs> totally worth it look even covered up the new york stuff that i wanted to cover up with the mountain down here and the aviation thing up there and I like that you can kind of see it behind her. The gears and stuff behind her head. She's cute. I love it. Now, where am I going to put it in my book? I don't know. Figure that out another day. 
Thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great day.